And so you see at the 30.1, pretty exciting stuff. We're going to two new characters on Odin and Mangog. Odin is going to be Cosmic Champion. Mangog is going to be Mystic. The monthly Q, we're getting Sins of the Father. Monthly side quest is pretty interesting. Where I'm going to get into it a bit more after this information is over. Odin's Bifrost Gauntlet, we're getting that as a side quest. And there, we're also getting Valhalla Victories. Valhalla Victories is going to be... Uh, similar to Vanquishing Blows, where you're going to be getting shards and rank up materials and stuff like that for finishing fights by using a certain certain kind of uh, attack. Uh, there's also going to be International Women's Day boss rush. Uh, I hope stars are involved in this one, and I also hope there's going to be titles, because I usually just go all crazy for titles and compete uh, like the boss rush six times to collect all the titles. There's also going to be three champion buffs and one overall champion nerf. Civil Warrior is going to be getting a moderate update. Angela and Masaka are going to be getting value only updates. And Hood is going to be getting a significant damage output increase and a semi-significant sustainability increase while uh, basically getting rid of all of his, almost all of his utility. So that's basically the nerf to Hood there. Uh, we're also getting something called an update tab where we're going to be getting the the updates and the news of the game and some additional bug fixes. One of the bug fixes actually is that uh, Daredevil and Daredevil Netflix are going to be completely uh, immune to miss now. So they cannot miss on any attack anymore. All right, moving on to the value only updates in Angela and Masakri. Angela actually was, was teased that she's getting a value only update a while back. People lost their minds, but I think a lot of those people are going to be very happy with what what she ended up uh, you know, being like. She's actually getting a significant utility buff and some damage output increase. So she can now parry projectiles. There's a new ability parrying projectiles, very cosmic based ability. Uh, you know, we have Call Obsidian, we have Proxima Midnight, as some of the examples of cosmic characters who can parry projectiles, and Angela is going to be one of them now. Uh, on special attacks, on a special activation, she's now going to be applying a 7 second 10% armor break per active buff on her. And we know Angela can stack buffs like, like no other, and this is going to be amazing for getting rid of multiple armor up stacks on the enemy. So, for example, Iron Man Infinity War has projectile attacks, she can parry them. Has a bunch of armor ups, she can, she can you know, get rid of them with activating special attacks. Uh, her fury potency is raised from 75% to 85%. Her aptitude is raised from 50% to 60%. Armor up is raised from 25% to 30%. Her sig now reduces auto block chance per buff active on her. Again, another Iron Man Infinity War counter. You have the, the armor breaks on the special activation. You have the parrying projectiles. Now you also have reducing auto block chance per buff active on her. This is going to be pretty great in my opinion, not just for Iron Man Infinity War as well, like for somebody like Modoc, who's been making a massive resurgence in the line sport defense because of protect defense tactic. This is going to be just, just amazing for, for her. And uh, this is also going to be replacing some of the stuff that she already has in her SIG. So uh, the, the, her SIG was just a butt of a lot of jokes previously with the, the nullify resistance, which was pretty useless. But now she's going to be reducing armor break, uh, 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 reducing auto block chance per act above on her. So that's going to be that's going to be pretty great. And uh, this is also going to be scaling the same way as as her sick currently does. So, thirty five percent chance to reduce uh, thirty five percent re reduce armor auto block chance per buff on her. Uh, her sick also now lowers damage over time duration per buff on herself. So at three buffs on herself, she's going to be pretty much immune to all damage over time effects, which is incredible. Basically, this is incoming damage over time effects, not necessarily things like suicides or stuff like that, but this is going to be amazing, 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 amazing for her. Uh, kind of kind of reminds me a little bit of Kingpin or Blade in this sense, basically just reducing the dot damage uh, durations and, and uh, gaining that pseudo immunity to them. Uh, basically, with three buffs, she can just get rid of all dot effects on herself. Uh, her SP3 is now has and now has a hundred percent chance to gain an aptitude buff, increasing potency of armor up, fury, and precision buffs by sixty percent, lasting for five seconds. 
and there's an additional line now being added that this aptitude buff is instead instead lasts 30 seconds if Angela already had an aptitude buff active on herself. Now how she would gain that aptitude buff is basically by just crossing that third bar of power threshold and landing crits in there. So you know you can just get that aptitude, stack that aptitude up higher and just you know do your do your regular combos and specials afterwards and getting that increased potency to to your buffs. Alright. For Masakre, uh, his base stat crit rate uh, is increasing from 837 to 900. That's not too, too much for him. Uh, and on hit, basically how Masakre previously worked is uh, is whenever he failed to apply an incinerate uh, while he was ignited, uh, he, he dealt an energy damage instead for, for the failed incinerate. Uh, that's getting increased, basically, that's getting doubled now. So that's going to be pretty significant. The ignition charges duration is now increased from 12 to 20 seconds. Previously, it was pretty difficult at times to actually get Masakre's bat ignited because, you know, you went into... Uh, to hit the enemy on their block and they just you know decided not to play defensively and you just lost all your ignition charges and you know you you, you had a hard time uh, trying to get his bat ignited ignited state duration is also increasing from 12 seconds to 20 seconds the disorient on the sp1 bonus duration is changed from if incinerated to if not incinerated so so now how this used to work is the SP1 used to get a bonus duration on the disorient on the 50% disorient, which is kind of which was kind of useless always. 50% not that useful, but it is useful maybe in like a cavy Q setting, I guess. But I'm not I'm not too sure about that. I think Masakre is going to be useful at times in the cavy Q, maybe. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe in the old cavy Q note for skills, because in the new one he needs to have a way to to prevent that that evade from happening first. Anyways, so the story in the SP SP1 uh, bonus duration changed from uh, if incinerated to if not incinerated. So like previously, how it worked is uh, the the duration got increased if the the opponent was incinerated, but now it's increasing if the opponent is not incinerated. And uh, the disorient bonus duration increased from 100% to 200%, so now it's going to be lasting a long time. I guess now I see where this is going. Basically, in the cavy queue, they want you to build to that SP1, land the SP1 while your bat is not ignited because you have no way to ignite your bat versus the, the can't touch this node. Land the super long disorient from the SP1 and then go in there, hit their block, ignite your bat. And as soon as your bat is ignited, you can keep it ignited basically forever. Keep them incinerated. Incinerate will also be preventing their evade. And that would make him a, a pretty great option for that cavy Q node. His SP2 now gains 50% block penetration if Mas Masakri is ignited. We already knew his SP2 has, uh, you know, some block penetration, some uh, increased damage through block because of the incinerates, but now... Uh, it's also getting a 50% block pen. So if you if you land it into somebody's block, it's going to be dealing significant damage. If you also are on the receiving end of of this SP2 landing into your block, you're going to be pretty dead most likely. Uh, SP2 fury into block raised from 867% to 1,036%. So that's getting that that uh, attack bonus is getting even higher. And then the miss after SP2 is raised from 0 0.75 uh, seconds to 1 second. This is pretty good. I think there's also synergy there that increases the duration of the miss even more. So I think this could maybe uh, make him less reliant on that synergy to be able to like land SP2 into blocks without having to worry too much about you know the enemy retaliating and, and getting erect. His SIG now triggers uh, change, his SIG trigger change from no debuff to no incinerate. So how his SIG previously worked was he got extra crit rating if there was no debuffs at all on the enemy. Now that didn't make any goddamn sense. Basically you could just go into the fight, go for a parry maybe, and that parry immediately put a debuff on the enemy. And if you were hitting them uh, while they had the debuff, the parry debuff on them, then you wouldn't be getting the extra bonus benefit uh, crit rating from the SIG. 
but now it's just basically allowing you to get your ignited state faster by by landing crits more often and then the sick crit chance uh, cap rates from 0 0.3 to 0 0.49 so that's also pretty good making him crit more often and get ignited faster and also dealing more damage overall all right uh, let's go through the odin's bifrost gauntlet now this is pretty interesting to me uh, this is a side quest for this upcoming month and upgrade your challenge. It says upgrade your challenge. Do you have what it takes to ascend to godhood? This latest event allows you to compete in Odin's gauntlet challenge and earn a unique resource Uru. Spend your uh, earned Uru to upgrade your gauntlet's reward and difficulty. Can you reach the highest level of gauntlet and become a god? Uh, be warned summoners those who you know that's the that's the regular uh, disclaimer they have that this may be too difficult for some players and basically this is how this works log in every day to collect a feather from the daily calendar to gain entry to the gauntlet once you're in the quest you'd face a single path challenge with zero energy cost gotta love zero energy cost fight your way to the end and claim the rewards in there you will find Uru Fragments, which you will use in Odin's Armory to build a casket of ancient winters, uh, which contains the splendors of Odin's Vault and unlock the next tier of the gauntlet. Keep going until you have met your match. So I think, I, I believe that the, the highest difficulty level for Odin's Gauntlet is going to be actually level 10. I could be wrong here. It says prove that you're god tier, complete tier 10 of Bif Bifrost Gauntlet and earn yourself the title of the title of god tier. So that's pretty funny uh, to, to see that as a title in the game because of you know all the all the stuff about god tier champions and stuff like that. But uh, this is pretty pretty interesting. It's like a, uh, it's like an increasing uh, increasingly challenging kind of uh kind of side quest and you just do it until you can't do it anymore or you, maybe you do it until you get blocked somewhere or you hit the cap somewhere uh it, it's pretty interesting i think they're trying to do something different i hope it's not too too uh grueling and too too long in terms of the number of fights in there but i am looking forward to maybe some some intense challenge uh, i think we may be missing some intense, uh, you know, at times over the top challenge in the game. Uh, maybe not necessarily uh, making it associated with the best, but the best of the best rewards. But even if it's just you know some some cosmetic reward or in this case the the god tier title, uh, I'd be I'd be pretty interested in. As I'm sure there's going to be massive progressional rewards associated with this, with this as well. But yeah, I'm pretty excited for this. And as a last thing. Let's go over the the annotated. I've been annotating things. Uh, let's go over the annotated Civil Warrior uh, spotlight that's here. All right, annotated Civil Warrior spotlight. Uh, he's going to be getting a prestige bump. Uh, I've just put down the six star prestige here from thirteen two five zero to basically he's going from uh, from twelve nine four one to thirteen two five zero. So that's a pretty pretty decent jump there. Uh, tech, armor, fury, heal block, stuff like that. We're going to be skipping the, the strength and the weaknesses. And his abilities are Civil Warrior's combination of Super Sol Soldier Serum and Advanced Tactic renders him immune to nullify and stagger effects. That's amazing. That's like some of the, the best stuff that, that makes uh, the thing so, so good. This will make Civil Warrior not only amazing versus Mystic Champions who may be looking to take advantage of his buffs, but also amazing versus, uh, you know, nodes like Buffet, uh, which take advantage of your buffs, or nodes like Power Snack. So this is gonna be great for him. Uh, for each armor up buff, active on Civil Warrior, reduce opponent's bleed and poison ability accuracy by 25%. The new Civil Warrior is going to be, uh, be able to stack armors like crazy and keep them on for a long time. So I think he could be also an option for something like biohazard. He could be also an option for uh, you know a lot of a lot of different bleeding and poisoning uh, nodes. His personal armor up buffs, unless otherwise stated, Civil Warrior's armor up buffs provide 233 armor rating for uh, and last 11 seconds. 
the 233 armor rating is going to be subjective to is going to be subject to diminishing returns so we don't necessarily uh, we don't know how many uh, you know how much damage mitigation this is going to provide it's going to be significant if you stack a lot of them but if you stack you know even more of them once you already have stacked a lot of them the the returns you're going to be getting on them is going to be significantly less thus the diminishing returns all attacks, every five, every fifth basic hit that either champion throws has a 100% chance to grant one armor up buff. So this is the same armor up buff lasting 11 seconds. Uh, dash back and hold block for 1.2 seconds. Convert all armor up buffs into fury buffs, each providing 12% attack, uh, attack rating for 12 seconds. These fury buffs have a max stack of 50 and a refresh each time an armor up buff is converted this way. So... There's going to be 12 second furies. You can stack them up to 50 if you manage to, you know, uh, last long. You know, if a fight manages to not die until you have stacked these all the way up to 50, uh, these would be granting you a total of 600% extra attack rating. Uh, so that's, that's pretty neat there. Uh, his heavy attacks, 100% chance to inflict a 10 second heal block debuff, preventing target from recovering health. That's just how he is right now if i'm not mistaken the special attacks when launched pause all armor up uh buffs for 20 seconds that's pretty great pausing all armor up buffs for 20 seconds that's a uh, uh, that will allow you to get significant stacking of armor ups maybe you can go for the back-to-back -back sp1s and you can just get the armor ups from there. You can get the armor ups from your combos and pause them and, you know, convert them all at the same time or just, you know, pause some of them for, for whatever need you might have for the armor ups. And on hit, pause all heal block debuffs on uh, the opponent for six seconds. Uh, that's also pretty great in my, in my opinion. Uh, it, this is going to, I think this is going to be... Uh, a bit better for for him than how he is now i think right now as he is right now his heavy inflicts a five second heal block and then if you land a land a special attack it refreshes the the heal block and makes it uh, last 10 seconds i think there's going to be um, this may not allow him to get that 100 percent uptime on it but uh, you mm -hmm. know if you just keep spamming heavies that wouldn't be that much of a problem. Special attack, one arc blast, gain up to four armor up buffs, 100% chance each. Again, these are gonna be the same armor up, buffs, armor up buffs lasting 11 seconds, four of them from the SP1, and you can convert them, you can pause them, you can do whatever you want with them. Uh, special attack, two repulsor rush, 100% chance to power burn, two bars of power dealing direct damage proportion proportional to the amount of power lost. Pretty similar to how it is right now, Special attack three, overload. The opponent is passively power locked during the special attack, kind of like magic special attack three. 100% chance to inflict a power drain, removing one bar of power. If the target uh, is reduced to zero power, they also re receive a power lock debuff for 14 seconds, preventing them from gaining power. So uh, it's it's I think it's pretty good. Uh, yeah, removing one bar of power. Basically, uh, you want to land this special when the enemy has less than one bar of power if you want the power lock afterwards. Uh, his sig ability, always active, uh, is going to give Civil Warrior two indefinite armor up buffs at the beginning of the fight and blocking during the opponent's special attacks inflict them with a passive weakness, reducing their attack rating by 60%. This also is true if Civil Warrior was blocking prior to special attack 3. So here they're saying that he can actually uh, maybe tank some special attack threes. I think that's going to depend on the the scenario. Weakness is very heavily impacted by by diminishing returns, but I do think this is going to be very useful versus a scenario like Apocalypse. Right? Apocalypse inflicts that poison off the SP one. Civil Warrior is going to be reducing poison ability accuracy. Uh, per armor up 25 percent chance to reduce it per armor up and here if you're going to be just blocking the sp1 uh, you can you can just block it use your armor ups and the weakness that you're going to be inflicting from the sig ability to to reduce the damage even more i'm i'm just all for an apocalypse counter to be honest his, his synergies are not going to be anything interesting they're all generic synergies 
I'm not I'm not too upset about that. And yeah, I think he is going to be kind of amazing. Kind of amazing because of a couple of factors. First of all, for me, it's very important this whole nullify and stagger immunity. It's very important that uh, that he has significant damage output here. Uh, he has access to buffs, debuffs, reducing the, the ability accuracy on poison and bleeds. He could be an option for like caustic temper because he's going to be reducing the, the poison ability accuracy while also gaining fury buffs. I think those are all going to be interesting and important factors to, to making him pretty viable, man. Um, I'm excited for Civil Warrior. I'm a lot more excited for Civil Warrior, Angela, and Masakure than I am for Hood. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed watching this video. Uh, I'm going to be making content about you know this month's update and everything like that uh, when, when the embargoes hit. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks all for watching. Catch you all later. Bye.